Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll cover the solutions to the three hydrostatic physics problems from the previous video, which if you haven't already watched, you should go watch it first if you don't want the problem spoiled. But I'll give a short introduction to each of the problems before I give the solution. The first problem is the hydrostatic paradox. The paradox is that looking at pressures, the force at the bottoms of the containers are the same, even if there are different amounts of water above the container. The resolution to this paradox is not too complicated. The issue is that the pressure at the sides of the containers weren't accounted for. Let's look at some of the forces on the water due to the pressure. As you can see, the ones on the left are slightly angled up, the ones on the right are slightly angled down, and the ones in the middle are straight. The force at the bottom is the same for all three, but the slight upward component of these forces on the left will compensate for the excess water, and the slight downward component of the forces on the right will compensate for there being less water. We can also do a quantitative analysis of this. Let's just leave the left container for space. Now to get the total force from the walls, we need to integrate. However, one way to avoid any actual integration is to take the vertical component of the force by taking the horizontal component of the area. This works because the angles are exactly the same as shown. So on the slanted walls, each small piece of the slanted wall exactly holds up the column of water above it. There's also a general way to check that the forces from the walls hold up the water for any container shape. But if you're not interested in the math, skip to the timestamp shown for problem 2. We have that the force on the water is the surface integral of PDA around the boundary of water, where DA is defined positive inward. But we only want the vertical component, which is y hat dot f, which we can pull into the integral as py hat dot DA. We can also substitute in the formula for the pressure, which is given by P atmosphere minus rho GY, which is from hydrostatic equilibrium. Now you may be wondering why we pulled y hat into the integral. The reason is that now we can use the divergence theorem. The divergence theorem tells us that for some vector field E, the surface integral of E dot dA is the volume integral of the divergence of E. However, one caveat here is that in this theorem, dA is defined positive outward, so we need to add a negative sign somewhere since we define dA inward. And now we can substitute in our vector field py hat and we get the following. Evaluating the divergence, which is just negative rho g, we get the volume integral of negative negative rho g, which is just rho g v. So the net upward force is simply the weight of the water, which is exactly what we want. Now for the second problem. As a reminder, we have two containers with the same amount of water, but a rock hung in one and a ping pong ball tied in the other, and we're looking to find which way the scale tips. We look at the net upward force on each of the containers. There's a force from the water pressure on both containers. Since the containers were originally filled to the same water level, and the volumes of the rock and ping pong ball are equal, they are still at the same water level. And since pressure only depends on height, the pressure at the bottom is the same for both. On the right side, there are no additional forces, but on the left side, there is a tension force from the string attached. And so we have that the force on the left is the force from the pressure minus the tension force, and the force on the right is just the pressure force. And since the tension force is non-negative, as the ping pong ball tends to float without it, the force on the right is greater, and so the right side tips down. There is a second way to look at this, which makes the weights of the rock and ping pong ball slightly more relevant and apparent. We can look at the net force on everything boxed on each side. On the left, the only external force not including the normal force is gravity. On the right, we have gravity and we have the tension force from the string holding the rock. Since the amount of water is the same for both, we ignore it and we only compare the weight of the ping pong ball on the left to the weight of the rock minus the tension force on the right. Now we can write the weights of the ping pong ball and rock as rho p v g and rho r v g. The tension force is the difference between the weight of the rock and buoyant force, so it is rho r v g minus rho w v g. Thus, substituting this in, we have the force on the right is rho w v g. Of course, this isn't the actual force, but we're only comparing the parts that are different on each side. Since the ping pong ball is less dense than water, the force on the right is greater and so it tips right. Now for the last problem. The problem here is that this perpetual motion machine composed of ping pong balls on a pulley apparently works. To find the issue, let's focus on one ping pong ball as it travels throughout the loop, since it seemingly continually gains energy. So first it falls accelerating, and here's the issue. It hits the water, and when it hits the water it can't go in without having some extra force push it in because the water pressure is there. And to be safe, we can quantitatively check that the conservation of energy holds. We look at the change in energy of this ping pong ball as it goes around the loop. We have the contribution from gravity, 
the buoyant force, and the work that we just mentioned, the work required to push the ball into the water. The work done by gravity in a cycle is zero since it starts and ends at the same height. The work done by the buoyant force is rho vgh since the force is always rho vg and it moves up a height h in the water, if h is the height of the container. Now as it goes in, the force on it is p times a, and it's going backwards against the force so the work done is negative pad, but ad is simply volume and thus work in is negative pv. Now adding all of them up we get 0 plus rho vgh minus pv, but the difference in pressure between the outside and the bottom of the container is rho gh as in the previous two problems, the change in energy is 0, and we're safe. So that's it for this video, I hope the problems were enjoyable, and thanks for watching.